Every time we talk about the Bible, okay, the Bible is God's word, it's very important. So what's the context? Why, why do we need the Bible? Uh, what about the devil? Where does he come from? What role does God play? And we always hear the word devil, 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 but where, what, how? Let's quickly look at it so you'll understand. This is the introduction to lesson two, which is the devil and his host. In introduction, before the creation of earth, as we understand it from the Bible, Satan or the devil functioned as an archangel of God. His name was Lucifer or the morning star. At some point in eternity, the sin of pride entered into his heart and he decided to rebel against God, overthrow his rule while leading one third of God's angels to join him in that rebellion. Now, for me as a lay person, immediately it comes to my mind, all right, God is perfect, heaven is perfect, where, did, where then did sin come from? Have you ever had that question before? I mean, God is perfect. Come on, God, you made everything perfect. How on earth did sin enter the world or his planet? This is even before you and I were created. As a matter of fact, we're innocent bystanders caught in a crossfire between good and evil. And uh, we, because of God's goodness, we have been provided a way of escape through a covenant. So where did sin come from? It's a very important question. And I want to be honest with you, I don't have the answer. And I'm looking forward to meet God in person and ask him, tell me please, where did it come from? And how can we avoid, after we finally get to you and everything is okay, that this doesn't happen again? I don't know about you, but for me it's very important when I finally do get there, I want to make sure that I stay there. I don't want to be kicked out because of somebody's rebellion. <laughs> Are you with me? <laughs> it's amazing. Anyway, it's a question. And I, I, I want to ask God face to face. Now, this resulted in a great war in the heavenlies that defies our human understanding, let alone imagination. All the nuclear weapons on earth put together and detonated cannot compare to that big explosion that took place in the galaxies. Now, you're talking about war. We are just told that one third of God's angels came into war with the other two thirds. Now, God himself is almighty, all-powerful. And, 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 and angels are, are, are not like us, you know. They are living in another atmosphere. I'll talk to you a little bit about that here. They have got powers that's beyond us. And, and, and they can, when, when, the, when God goes to war, you can take all of our nuclear weapons put together. It is, it is just like a small little spark in a huge fireplace. It, it, it makes no difference at all all that we have. So the kind of war that took place and the big bang that happened up there in the, in the, in the galaxies, in the universe, it's beyond our understanding. Those kind of war can just suck in entire galaxies. That's how massive that war was around us. We were just not around to witness it. How do you know it, Ravi? Because we're talking about God. That this entire, our, our whole universe put together, for him he can just fold it up like in a cloth and walk away. Uh, he's, he's, he's beyond our, our, our uh, that's why I like that song very much that we sing, God of wonders beyond our galaxies. You are holy. You know, the universe declares your majesty. I love that song really because it's so Star Wars, you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, anyway, uh, the devil and his angels uh, lost that war and were cast out of their heavens, or let's say God's dwelling place, awaiting their final punishment. So God said, you're out, I'm going to punish you. Now in the meantime, somehow, we, you know, we, we don't know where from the punishment of the devil casting out and to, to, to this time. In the meantime, God decided he was going to, I use the word recreate earth, and I'll explain to you again what I mean by that, by some theological understanding. Um, the devil and his angels lost at war and were cast out of the third heavens, God's dwelling place, awaiting the final punishment. In the meantime, God recreated our first heavens. Let me explain to you what I mean by recreate. Most theologians say when they look at planet Earth in the book of Genesis, they say that this just doesn't look like God because it says in the beginning, you know, it was dark and it was, there was no light and there was no life. It doesn't sound as the, 
the image of God. And so his spirit moved over and he spoke words and he put man in the garden and lights and there was a chaos before that that nobody knows what happened. Uh, some theologians refer to that as what we call the pre-Adamic age. Sometimes scientists, you know, they argue with us and say, oh, the earth has been around for more than 6,000 years and they have got uh, a lot of uh, fossils that they can say were there before. Uh, we don't argue with them. It's just the Bible has kept that from us. Why did God in the Bible keep it from us? I don't know. He just said that this is enough for you to know right now in your 100, 122, 120 years or so of life, enough for you to handle. This is all you need to know. But this earth apparently has been there much longer. Even God himself declares that he's going to be there forever. And the new heavens and the new earth is going to be a recreation of everything that has been there in a more beautiful way, in a more majestic way, probably in a larger uh, uh, way, in a big, big, grandiose uh, appearance. So, coming back to this, in the meantime, God recreate uh, he, the, the current heavens and the, and, and the earth as we know is today. When we talk about uh, he re, God recreated the first heavens, I'm talking about the visual atmosphere, the, the sun, the star, the moons, everything that you see, the first heavens, and the current earth as we know it today. The devil and his angels now dwell in the second heavens, which is basically the invisible atmospheric realm. Now we're suddenly talking about heavens in different ways. The third heavens is where God dwells. He is there and his angels. That was where the devil used to be, but he's been cast out. When he was cast out, we today have what we see, the, 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 the first heavens, which is the earth, the, the stars, the sky, everything that we see, that's our first heavens. The second heavens is the invisible realm between us that we don't see, but they are uh, beings, both spiritual beings in terms of uh, angelic beings, as well as unclean spirits or demonic forces that, that dwells in that atmosphere. And when we have the Spirit of God on us, for those of you uh, who sometimes get very freaked out about, oh, there are demons everywhere, just remember that when Jesus is in your heart, you're covered by the blood, you have an angel protecting you, you have the eyes of God on you, and that is why in this, this realm that you don't see, whatever that is out there which is not clean or unclean, is not able to touch you if you are in Christ. Amen. Amen. So, just relax and be easy because some people are so afraid. I cannot go there or I cannot touch this or I can't do this because it's going to affect me. Yeah, you're not that fragile. Uh, God will not do that. It's just like your kids. You protect your kids when they're supposed to go out into the cold. You make sure they've got all the nice jacket and hat and shoes and so on. How much more will God protect you? Are you following me? So take it easy and relax. Don't get so uh, paranoid. Over, oh, I'm going to be cursed for the rest of my life because I said this or I did that. God is much more bigger than that. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, what is the devil and his angels? As uh, here, oh, now the format has changed. Okay, this is how I wanted it to be, but anyway, we'll have it in an A4 style and we'll change again. What is the, first of all, as the word Satan is an untranslated Hebrew, uh, as a word rather, Satan is an untranslated Hebrew word, which means adversary, while devil is a translation of the Greek word, Diabolos. No matter what you do, don't name your children Diabolos. It's a very bad word, okay? Meaning a liar, an enemy, or false accuser. <laughs> In fact, uh, Jacob, I really feel bad for Jacob because Jacob literally means deceiver. <laughs> Why on earth? The parents thought he was cute. Ah, you deceive your brother. He came out first and then you came after him. So, oh, you cute little deceiver. But he had to grow up with that name, you know. Be careful what you name your children. I mean, don't call your kids lollipop or strawberry or something. Give them a name that has got some meaning. It's very important. So uh, anyway, that's why the word comes from. Anyway, the fallen angels sometimes referred to as demons or unclean spirits carry out the biddings of the devil. The fallen angels sometimes refer to them as demons, sometimes refer to them as unclean spirits. They all are in the same category. They are one and the same, and they are falling under this. In Matthew 25 and 41, Jesus said, Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Just take note that the hell was not prepared for mankind. It was always originally intended for these devil and his angels. And when the devil managed to 
deceive mankind into following his rule or his uh, reign. And that is why we need to be redeemed from his destiny, because we want our destiny in Christ, not our destiny in the devil. Does that make sense now? Yes. Great. As we go on, um, Matt, uh, Jesus saw Satan fall from heaven because in Luke 7, 10, 18, he says, I, he replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. So Satan was cast out of heavens. So we're talking about the third heavens, the dwelling place of God. Are you with me? He was cast out. So Jesus, so the devil is not in the, in the, in the realm of God. He's allowed, as you will see in the book of Job, he's allowed to uh, uh, reply to God, respond to God, or even uh, have an audience of God with God's allowance. But he is not able to go into that realm and create havoc as he has done before and rightfully has been punished and banished. Are you with me? So, uh, he's, but he doesn't have any more rule over there because he's left behind an eternal history of his record. Now, the devil was created by God through Jesus, as all other creation. If you read these scriptures, you realize from Proverbs 16, Isaiah 54, all things that are made and have been made were made through Christ. Therefore, even the devil himself was created through Christ. Um, he was a creation. He was made not as the devil. He was made as an archangel. If you read uh, the scriptures that I've suggested to you, he was created as a beautiful angel among one of the archangels. One of the archangels was Michael, He's a warrior. Another archangel was uh, Gabriel, a messenger. Uh, not that messenger that you have on the Bible, right? I mean, on your, on, your, on your Facebook. This is another messenger, like a real one. And then you have another archangel, which was an archangel of worship, which was Luc uh, Lucifer, which Lucifer actually means morning star. It's, uh, that was what his name was. Jesus is the bright morning star with a big B. Lucifer was the morning star. So, and uh, he was actually created as that, but uh, during this worship and everybody, he had to lead all the people to worship God. He somehow felt, why not I be the one being worshipped? Because look at how beautiful I am. He apparently was the most beautiful creation among all of God's creation. And he this pride entered into his heart. He felt, I could be more. I could be like the most I, I want to be worshipped. And that was where uh, sin entered into his heart. And... Um, he functions in an order. The devil is not chaotic, you know. He has an order. When he, when he, when he managed to get one-third of God's angels, you're talking about millions, maybe even billions of, of these fallen angels to rebel against God. Um, he has an order and a structure. He's not just chaotic, like he stands there and there's anarchy. He has a proper order. And in Ephesians 4, 6, 14, Paul said, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world and against spiritual forces in heavenly realms. That is the order in which he functions. Does that make any sense? Rulers are, they are demonic forces or, or fallen angels that are in charge of uh, governments, entire nations. There is a ruler over Denmark. There is a ruler over Sweden. There is a ruler over uh, Norway. Even though you might think that only angels live in Norway. Uh, there are also principalities there. They are ruler over every nation. And uh, these rulers actually has tremendous influence over the leaders. That's why we are asked to pray for the leaders. Does that make sense? So that our influence, our Christian influence and prayer will be upon them. And then you have got um, uh, authorities. Authorities are all these, the, the, the soldiers, the, the, the army and the police and so on. And they are also principal uh, rulers or, or spirits over them. They are ruling over them, trying to get them to do the devil's bidding instead of God's bidding. And then you have got powers of this dark world. Powers of this dark world are spirits that are keeping unbelievers in darkness. When you're praying for salvation for your mom or your dad or your uncle, auntie, friends, that's the spirit that's keeping them in darkness. You've got to say, God, please take that spirit of darkness away from whoever you're praying for salvation. Last but not least, you have got the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. These spiritual forces of evil are the spirits that are trying to oppress believers because we are filled with the Spirit, Holy Spirit. And then the devil will try, or the, his, his evil spirits will try and influence us. They cannot possess us. I'll talk to you about that later. Only God can possess you. But they can try and influence you. 
And that's why when uh, Peter was standing there and Jesus was with Peter and Peter went up to Jesus and said, you're not going to go to the cross. And then Jesus realized an evil spirit was influencing Peter. He looked at Peter and said, get thee behind me, Satan. He wasn't referring to, to Peter as, a, as Satan, but that was because the devil was trying to, that evil spirit was trying to influence him to influence. Are you with me? So you've got to be sure that when you're being influenced by people around you, it is the right spirit. Okay, now, why do we need to know about them? This is why you need to know about them. Because the devil wants to destroy us. That's what it says. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. God wants you to have life and to the full. Amen? That's why we need to know about them. And he picks his victim. The devil just can't go around and pick anybody and, 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 and destroy them. The Bible says very clearly, be alert, be sober, for your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He can't just devour you. He looks who to devour. Are you with me? And then, in order to operate in our atmosphere, he needs willing vessels to influence. That's why the Bible says, submit to God, submit then to God, and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. He can't just come and jump on you and take over you. He needs you to cooperate, to give in to him. And that is why you have got all kinds of witchcrafts and different kinds of groups that, that avail themselves, says, come and use me. And those of you who've lived in an animistic society where you have got witch doctors, why are the witch doctors able to, to do what they do? That's because they ask that to rituals allow that evil spirit to come and manifest through them. Are you with me? So you got to resist. So if you, if you submit to God and resist the devil, he will flee. But if you submit to the devil and resist God, the devil will, of course, come and, and have influence over you. That's why you can't, as a Christian, be worshipping God and also be dealing with witchcraft. And try and understand what is witchcraft. It's very important. Some of you think that reading stars is okay, you know, uh, uh, astrology. As, uh, there's a difference between astronomy and astrology. Astronomy is, uh, is, is, is demonic. It opens doors to, to the spiritual world to come and influence you. And be careful when you are reading books or going to uh, meetings where they are worshipping some god that you don't even know what god it is. Ask yourself, should I even be here? When you have the Holy Spirit, you will have that witness that, I don't think I should be here. Something is not right here. Are you with me? So don't submit to God, not to the devil. And if you submit to the devil, of course, then you need to have God's help to help you to set you free, which can easily be done with a word. It's not some special ritual that you need to go through. Jesus cast out demons with just one word. Hallelujah. It was, it was easy. I don't know why we make it so complicated. With Jesus, it's just in the name of Jesus, it was all done. And as you see in the scriptures. Now, in order to operate in our atmosphere, he needs vessels to influence him. That's why he is another, he's in the third atmosphere, he's in the second heavens, he wants to come to the first heavens, he needs a vessel to come and influence, that's why he's looking for body. Now, why does this uh, happen? Because due to the sin of Adam and Eve, he took dominion over the earth. The devil has a dominion over the earth, limited dominion, not total dominion, because Jesus has now died, resurrected, and uh, uh, made a way for us. But he still has a limited power of operation. And it's important for you and I to know. He is known as the prince or the god of this world or the prince of the air. Um, that's why you have all these scriptures to refer. The, the devil, that's what he's referred to as. Now, we quickly go to the last bit and then we're done. Where can we find them in scripture? Uh, his, his ambition, you can find in the book of Isaiah where he said, I want to be like the Most High. His sin in Ezekiel, in Ezekiel was talking about the sin. At first it was referring to one king, an actual king, king of Tyre. But then it was referring to somebody who was walking in the heavenlies with God and then referring directly to Lucifer himself. And he's roaming back and forth in Job chapter uh, 1 and verse 7. He's roaming back and forth the earth. I don't know how many rounds he's done. He's probably a good walker. But uh, I don't know how they travel, uh, you know, maybe by some kind of, uh, uh, what do you call this? Translation, uh, transportation. transportation. What was that word? You know, you move from one. Tele, tele yeah, yeah. Teleportation. Oh, you people even know how he transports. Teleport. <laughs> Teleportation or spiritual portation, some kind of a. Trans but it goes back and forth. And then, of course, um, 
there are fallen angels in prison in Jude chapter 1 and verse 6. There are some angels that, that, that these fallen angels when they're on earth, they step out of their place. Like for example, in the book of Genesis, it says that the sons of, 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 of God, which is the fallen angels, uh, took the sons of, of, of the daughters of, of men to be their, their um, bride, and they gave birth to children which were a, uh, giants of those days. And, and some of these demons, when they stepped out of their way and did things they were not meant to do, God actually literally put them in a place, uh, in the Greek it's called Tetaros, or a prison kept for judgment rather than roaming about. So you have roaming spirits and you have spirits, uh, fallen angel, roaming fallen angels and you have fallen angels that are kept in prison because they have stepped out of their boundary. So God is uh, gracious to us. And then, yeah, amen to that. And then you also have got, um, uh, important for you to understand that when an impure spirit comes out of a person, when, it's, when it talks about coming out of a person, they don't come and sit inside of you. When they come out of you, means they have an influence. How do they influence me? In my mind, in my actions. Are you with me? So, but Jesus, whenever he was there, he cast demons out by saying, get out. Asking that influence to be, you know, to be released. So, when an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes again through the arid places. Remember the devil just goes back and forth, right? Dry and arid places. And if it does not find a uh, uh, seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they will go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. And that is why for those of us who have been cleared of an influence of a wicked spirit or a wicked influence or a fallen angel, it's important that you fill that up with the Spirit of God. And that is why the Bible tells us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, it uses a comparison of, of, of alcohol by saying, don't get drunk in wine, but get drunk in the Spirit. So you must always remember there is a law of exchange. You take one out, you must put one in. And in every addic, uh, when you go to any addic addiction counseling, they said you can't just take an addiction out of a person. You need to have it replaced. Not with an addiction, but they have to occupy that mindset with something else. Does that make any sense? Yes. Yep. So we are told to avoid uh, the same condemnation of the devil as in First Timothy chapter 3, because the devil will be condemned. So do not give room to him. Who can be affected by them? Obviously, unbelievers can be affected by the devil because he has a first-hand rule over them if they don't believe in God at all. Secondly, believers. If you're a believer, you can be affected. How? By not fully obeying God. Don't just be a traditional Christian. I go to church, I say hallelujah, amen, I walk away. That's why it's important we started with the Word of God. Make sure the Word of God dwells in you so that you are a believer and you are a, a, an active believer, not just a passive believer. All right? Um, you'll be amazed how many people go to church all their life and have no clue uh, of any conviction of, of, of the Holy Spirit, let alone uh, operation of God. It's very important. And uh, we go on before we end. Note, there is often a dispute over the word demon-possessed and demonized as under the influence of the demonic power. So when somebody says, oh, this person is demon-possessed, look, the only person that can possess you is God. Take note of that. Only God can possess you. So, um, demon cannot just come and possess you, as to come and vroom, take over you. All right? Uh, I wanted to uh, use an example. Um, okay, can I ask uh, Theodius, you, because your, your wife is uh, right now, as I can see, the most best uh, example to use. If you can come with your wife, because it's okay for you to, 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 to possess her. <laughs> what I mean is that, uh, can you just uh, lift her up? Lift her up. Yeah. He's possessing her, right? Okay, now you, if you put her down, can you just uh, push her little by little? Right now he's influencing her. You understand what I'm saying? So the devil does not possess us, but he can influence us. Let's imagine that, and, 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 and the, the, the Bible spoke of many other spirits coming. For example, if he is not influencing her, if I'm influencing him, he's influencing her. I can indirectly influence you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much. So the influence is how you have this ability to uh, be influenced over something. And so you need to be understanding, asking yourself this question that I need not to be influenced by that spirit, 
because I need to position myself in Christ, in God. Hallelujah. So it is vital to understand that as humans, we have a will, and neither God nor the devil can superimpose their will upon us. Thus, and the admonition uh, with drunkenness and being filled with the Spirit can be used. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. So don't be influenced by, go, don't get drunk by unclean spirits. Instead, be filled with the clean Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. Now, when can we, uh, can we be protected by God? Luke 10, 17, I already told you, Jesus said, all I have been given authority to trample. I have given you, rather, authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Can you say amen to that? Amen. That's fantastic. And we do it by faith, in prayer, in fasting, in praise, in worship, in obedience, in repentance. Whenever we keep this in our life, we don't have to be worried about the enemy coming into our lives. Hallelujah. Now we're going to end. Can you say amen? Well, some of you are thinking that, my God, I didn't know I had to wait so long for coffee. Okay, we are almost done. How can we apply scriptures towards the devil? Jesus spoke the word to him time and again. It brings us back to the Bible. You've got to know the Bible. Amen. So whenever it happens, he comes and says, you know what, you've got to do this. And then you can say, it is written. I'm not saying that you go out and look at somebody and say, devil is written. You can speak right to your head and say, listen, it is written. This is what is written. That's why we must know the Word of God. Amen. Have a pattern of following. You must know the Word of God. Knowing the Word of God in knowledge and experience. That's why I'm saying don't just be a traditional Christian, but I know Genesis, Revelation, blah, 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 but also in experience. Not just a mental accent, but a hard experience. Know the Bible. Then understand that Jesus is greater he says in verse uh, John 4 and 1, uh, 1 John, rather, chapter 4, verse 4, You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. He is greater than the one that is in the world. The one that is in the world could be great, but the one that is in us is greater. Hallelujah. Now we go on and understand in D, we put out his fiery darts by faith and tear down his stronghold in our minds. How does the devil try to influence us? And when the Bible talks about the, the armor that we've been given, and then it talks about pick up the shield of faith because of the, 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 the fiery darts. The fiery darts are these uh, darts that the soldiers used to shoot in the Roman army with fire at the end to create. So whenever this dart comes with fire, you can immediately said, I put away this thought. What are these thoughts? It's, the, it's, it's thoughts that is not of God. And so when that comes, you have the power to say, I tear this down in the name of Jesus. I don't care what you're going through. You try this out again and again. When it comes to your mind, something that is bad, something that is negative, it's not of God. You say, in the name of Jesus, I tear down this thought in Jesus' name. Amen. And then, as we go on, it says here in uh, E, Revelation 12, uh, verse uh, 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 chapter 12 verse 11 says they triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb hallelujah by the word of their testimony which is speaking out the word of god they did not love their life so much as to shrink from death they were not afraid of death they, they knew that death was just being in the presence of god so don't fear death don't fear your testimony make sure that you have the blood of, uh, of the lamb covering you it's free and available and in conclusion the devil may have influence over those who yield to him. Jesus died for our sins, conquered death. He is resurrected so that we can have total victory as we submit to his lordship and guidance. And that's why in Matthew 28 and verse 18, Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, Go. I mean, goodness, think of it. Lord, have mercy. He sent us because all authority has been given to him. And that's why we go and make disciples. And that's why he said, go and make disciples. That's why we're doing this. Why are we doing this in the church? It's going to be so many lessons. That's because he said, make disciples, teach people. Not just preach and have a wonderful time. It's okay. We can preach and have a wonderful time. 
but we need to make disciples. We need to be able to reproduce something that we have been given. That's why you, you're, we're giving tools to you on a very weekly basis. You can take these tools, keep it, we'll help you to organize it in a nice way. This is just a, 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 a format that we're using for now, but there will be proper A4 uh, papers that you can actually clip down and put it in a, in a folder, and then you can actually teach others and make disciples.